Hello everybody, this is Christine Aldridge. Welcome to a new practice with me. Uh, we will be working today on this um, practice session of just little miniature leaves. I was experimenting and uh, um, so get your watercolors out and grab a piece of paper and a brush and a cup of coffee and uh, come practice with me. So let's get started. Uh, first off, my materials. I have my pretty excellent watercolors, which is a marvelous set, one of my favorites. Uh, budget priced at just $19.99 from Amazon. Uh, really pigmented, not chalky at all. A nice grade of uh, practice watercolors. I use them quite often. I have um, the Vision, which is a Strathmore. Uh, 300 GSM cotton paper uh, that comes on sheets of 9 by 15. I cut it into three strips and cut those down to 5 inch cards. Uh, and of course I have my number 2 uh, Teclon practice brush and a just a, a paper towel. Uh, the first thing I did is I used an old Pilates workout CD <laughs> that came with my tennis shoes of all things and uh, I made a perfect circle on this card and I did mark the center. I did it really lightly in mechanical pencil that way uh, I don't have to erase it or actually I will erase it uh, because I don't intend to touch it with the paint so I can just use a kneaded eraser. What I was really after was the ability to mark the center and know what my boundaries were since we're going to work in a circle. This practice exercise is is uh, owed entirely to the credit of Shada Campbell's channel. Uh, she showed it when she came back from a vacation. She'd been uh, visiting over Christmas. She had been ill for a few days. She had not painted in some time. And so she did this as just a way to get the brush back into her hands and feel, uh, you know, feel what it did against the paper, practice brush strokes, that type of thing. So that is what this particular exercise is about. And um, I wanted to use it as a practice session to try and make some things that I've never made before. So um, I did mix up a variety of greens on my palette and some other colors that I think that I might need uh, because they do appear in pretty much all of the work that I've done so far. <laughs> and uh, so let's get started. Um, I mixed up a green. This is, I believe, the olive green and the sap green. Uh, just a nice little mixture. I thought I'd do some, um, you know, just a nice, delicate little... Uh, little leaf stem and you don't have to to uh, you know there's no real rhyme or reason to this in uh, you know in exactly how it, it doesn't have to be any one way in particular. You're really just after uh, a stem to put on some beautiful leaves and do your practice your brush strokes. So I'm pushing and pulling and pushing and pulling. And so if I want to make these a little And what I want to show with this is how actually easy it is, uh, even if you are a newbie like I am, 
to uh, make sense of these wonderful tutorials that these ladies uh, take the time to put up for us. And um, my hat is off to all of the talented watercolor artists who make tutorial videos and uh, make the rest of us believe that we can do it. And they don't all have to be perfect. They don't all have to make sense. The idea is, is that each time you stroke the paper, you're learning more about how the uh, paper and the paint interact with each other. Um, you know, how it... Um, You know, what using different directions or different uh, pressures will do. It's just a fascinating like maybe this has two. You can add them, you can. You can't subtract them, but you can just keep adding them. If you see something you don't like, like that one was a little, that one, you know, had a bit of a white spot that I didn't much care for. So I did that, got it out of there. Maybe try going a different direction. The point is that you can do it. You don't have to be particularly, uh, you know, savvy or talented. You don't have to be an artist. You can, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Of course, you know, just a few years ago, I didn't draw. And now, of course, I have 11 coloring books out there that uh or 12 coloring books that you all seem to enjoy very much so just a few weeks ago i had never painted a watercolor and now look okay so the you know the now if you want to you can take it come in back in with a darker color and add some zhuzh, whoops, it's got too much water on it. Um, what uh, they, these ladies say is that if you're getting those crusty paint uh, marks, it's because your brush has too much water on it. So I let these get a little dry, but that's okay because you can just come back in and add more. Not worried about the detail. Like all of those different leaf shapes, uh, you know, the different ways that they work. And of course, now I'm gonna go uh, probably this way with one. Uh, roughly, I'm thinking a peace sign, sort of, you know, type shape. I don't want to, um, uh, oh, okay, so the next one, I had an idea for uh, a very pretty, actually, I already know that this color combination works. This is a dark purple, and this one, I believe, is the chocolate brown. So if you take this purple color over here and mix it with this chocolate brown, it makes a very, very pretty color. And I'll show you a different way to, um, uh, to make leaves. 
or not leaves, but um, that you don't always have to uh, start out with the stem. So let's say we want to make some sort of broad heart-shaped leaves. So you're just, I mean, we've, we can all draw hearts, right? So just draw some hearts. On the paper. Maybe this one has two hearts. And there's another heart. And now you can turn this over. Keeping in mind that your center is right here, so you want to just aim right for that center. And then you know that you can attach your leaves this way. So what's going on with this one? Well, maybe it's turning around for some reason like that. <laughs> it's pointing a different direction. Or it could be coming from here. Just use your imagination. Maybe there's a little creature over here tugging on it or something. Um, or if you don't like it, which I don't, Get your brush and make that wet. Don't know that you can lift it all off, but you might be able to get enough of it. Just doing little micro spins of the brush. After all, part of learning is making mistakes, right? So let me, uh, actually now I can see it. So I'm going to put that back. I'm also going to put that back. And we'll just let it be. We'll just let it be. Maybe we'll do something. We'll be able to do something else with that. But in the meantime, I'm going to come this way. Because I want another one back here behind it. Okay. So we're gonna. I'm gonna add some uh, details to that later, so it'll look more interesting. All right, and now I have a third green that I've mixed up. Remember that you're just practicing. So there's you know different shaped leaves, different color mix, uh, different. You can just play. You know that's that is really what what I am doing and what I am about. Y'all know that I like experimentation. Whoops. There went a rather furry creature. Quick guard the water. <laughs> uh, let's see. It also gives you a chance to practice your really fine lines. That's a little long. I don't want it that long.
see if I can get that out of there now. I might stand half a chance if it's a little drier or, you know, I get it a little sooner. There we go. Um, so maybe these Maybe these come right off the stem. And maybe these are long ones. Maybe there's one that runs up like that. And another one that runs like that. And maybe there's two. That run like that. Maybe there's one coming up from here. And another one from there. They don't always have to be a success. And they don't always have to exist in nature. They're generally smaller near the top. And so maybe there's something, one more, like a little stray one right there. So, you know, that's just a different, whoops, a different kind of uh, leaf. And um, there's one more leaf that I want to do, but I'm, I won't be able to fit it onto here with the composition that I have in mind. Or maybe I will. Maybe we'll just do... Uh, interesting leaves. So this is a um, like an uh, well I don't know exactly what color it's in the browns section of this and this is let's mix these two together mix those two together and see what happens and might as well grab some of that see what that does. That makes an interesting, oops, you can't see that, can you? That makes an interesting shape. What I did is I had some of that purple um, over here. And so now I mix this up into this sort of interesting brown shade. And what I want to try are, um, once again, this is a, um, you know, this is just, just for practice. So maybe this one is just leaves. Oops. Sorry, I didn't realize I was off screen. Okay. And... Okay, so now I want something like this. You know, where you're actually sort of, and I didn't do that very well, did I? Um, okay, well, let's try this. Let's see if we can scrub it with a darker color. Um, let's add in over here. Let's 
like a red. This is just for the purposes of, of you know, demonstration. That's it. See, so like that. He did, because these could be leaves or flowers. Or autumn leaves, you know. The only thing that holds us back is our imagination. And so use your imagination to create something that you would like to see. And once again, these could be flowers or they could be leaves. They could be fall leaves or Some sort of odd plant that uh, they don't all have to be the same size. Some can be small or it could be larger. And just want to Play kissing cousins with its friend over there. <laughs> and this is just, uh, you know, I should should say that this is the third one of these that I've done today. Um, These are the first two, so uh, I just got a little got a little wild here. I really, you know, I learned different things. These are really miniature. I love uh, this flower here. Um, you know, this pink one. Uh, there were things that I I, I really liked. Uh, the this set here. Um, but these are just so much fun. And so this one is something entirely different. This one is, you know, just leaves, I guess. But um, here at C.L. Aldridge Art, what I want to do is I want to encourage the creativity in all of us. As you know, I draw coloring books, but uh, that doesn't mean that uh, you know, that I don't appreciate all forms of art and drawing and painting and, uh, you know, am completely and totally inspired by some of these uh, wonderful watercolor artists that we have here on YouTube. I think the uh, episode one of Practice With Me was an Ellen Crimmy Trent. Um, and then this one, of course, is, uh, you know, what I learned from uh, Shada Campbell. Uh, and then I watched a very cool one today um, that Emma Fever did about uh, painting uh, lilies. So, or not lilies, um, violets. So that'll be interesting as well. Uh, and you can also just think outside the box of uh, colors that you, you know, might want to use. Uh, and you don't always have to be uh, leaves. But let's try now this, uh, once again, this darker color. But let's add some of this hooker's green. And we're also going to add, oh, there we go. That's it, right there. And let me grab... Uh, let me grab the mixing brush so I can add the water in. There we go. 
uh, I didn't want to rinse off the paint that was already on this little brush. So I've made up even a, a, a different um, green. And so let's see here. Let's try this. Let's make a big circle. And then let's curve the, you know, we'll give it some teeth. And if I do some just sort of one way strokes, which leave a little white striping. And that creates a different kind of leaf. Just sort of using that, you know, that whole. What I'm looking for is that. almost like a coleus leaf. Is that right? Coleus? I need, uh, I'm gonna need a darker color for that, but, um, but coleus I believe is a, a shady, uh, okay, so maybe this one comes around behind that. That's kind of what I'm after. Um, and then maybe this one. Let's see here. Yeah, it doesn't have to be. Yeah, let's make this one a little more. Let's make that one a little bit more um, pointy instead of round. See how that's going to dry with that hard edge? Whoops, you can't see that. There we go. Now it's better. Um, you can just wet that edge. And then just use a little more pigment in there. And you can always go back in and fix that later. All right, so now let's pick a, um, and let's, let's use a darker brown. Mix a little bit of dark brown into that green right there. Just like that. See, because when you do exercises like this, you are practicing all kinds of things. You are practicing your um, color mixing. You are practicing not, you know, what your, uh, what your paints do. And that created, when I added that brown in, of course it created an entirely different kind of color. But once these dry, you just never know what the magic of art is gonna do for you. So don't be afraid to experiment and try it 
and see what happens. So, you know, these technically, these two colors would not really work, but they go together right there. So you can, you know, definitely try that. And then maybe here, There's a little one. And maybe just a little something growing there. So that's what, we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five different kinds of leaves. Now we can do a sixth one. Uh, what kind of a leaf should we do? Um, let's see here, how about a we could do a um, an evergreen of some kind. Um, I did lots of those over the holiday. Uh, let's see. Actually, you know what? That is not... Yeah, well. Um, okay. Let's, uh, okay, start. And we'll take this. Not sure why I went with that particular green, but yeah, just now or now. So to do these, all you do is just make nice, straight little. Um, brush marks you're drawing needles in. And I can change the others to brown, which I will. And I'm going to change the, um, once again, you know, correcting your mistakes learning how to do that. The cat is watching me on the screen. That's so funny. She can't quite figure out uh, why the candy doesn't drop out from the bottom of the screen on Candy Crush. <laughs> candy Crush is her personal favorite game. Mine is Mahjong. She's not too... She's, she's like, Mahjong moves too slow, Mom. This is maybe it moves slow for her, but it moves really fast for me. <laughs> Alright, I've got the dark brown now. 
Uh, I, I was not uh, happy with that green stem, so I'm just going to change that baby out to brown. Just like this. And it's okay if a little of that green showed through. And you can always, uh, you know, use a brighter green. And I didn't, you know, I didn't change the brown off my, uh, off my brush. So you can add a second layer of color in here with a brighter green. So I do hope that you enjoy these practice with me's. Uh, I know that the uh, watercoloring uh, does not get nearly as many views as my uh, as my tut or my tutorials for coloring, or uh, you know the color along with me's. Uh, and I, you know, of course, it warms my heart when you guys buy my drawings and buy my books and color and do all of that kind of stuff. I do so enjoy watercoloring uh, or learning to watercolor. Hopefully with an eye someday to adding it to my uh, permanent repertoire of things that uh, appear in my Etsy shop. That day is not yet arrived. <laughs> but I, uh, I, what I'm doing here is I'm going to move this out just a tad uh, because it needs to be moved out just a tad. So... Adding a little bit more water to this so that I can add some more leaves. One of the things about the pine or the evergreen is just that it's so forgiving. And if you'll notice, I'm a little more confident with it than I am with some of the others because I've done them so, you know, I've done so many of them now just coming off of winter. And they can be soft and fluffy, or they can be stickery, whichever you prefer. Uh, okay, now there is one more thing. Notice that I, I haven't done an awful lot of detail. Uh, so. We can fix that by going in and adding in some detail. Um, I have found that a great detail color, just like the Payne's Gray, is a great detail color uh, for um, shadowing and doing all of that kind of stuff. The sepia color, which is that one, uh, and the a little bit of the uh, burnt umber with the black like that to make a very dark kind of um, burnt coffee like that. Maybe that is sort of more of a sepia color. This to me is more of a chocolate brown even though I know it's not chocolate brown, uh, but this is a great color for doing detail work. Oops, way too much pigment. Like this. You know, throwing in, actually it needs a little more black. Way too much water. And now not enough. Too much water, too much pigment. It's a matter of testing it out. Oops. Yeah, see, that's just too much. Just 
get it out of there. There we go. Too many. Don't do too many. Yeah, this one is too dark. I'm not. I'm not gonna get it. For some reason, I'm just not gonna get this one. It's okay. The world will not come to an end. I promise. There we go. <laughs> Just get them out of there. And we can go back to our, uh, let's see, where was our color that we liked so much for those? Um, oh no, I have made it go away. Well, that's okay. We can, uh, we'll drop back six yards and hunt. I know that this color works in here. There it is. There it is. I just was having way too heavy of a heavy of a hand. There we go. So we're just gonna add this tiny bit of detail. Very faintly. And then, on this one, we take this tiny bit of that, see if it's going to be enough. They don't all have to be the same. Interest, visual interest. And you can kind of twist and tweak and add little details that you want to. Um, or, you know, leave it alone. Like, for instance, over here, if we wanted to just add a pop of color, uh, that, you know, kind of a, a shock 
to the system, so to speak. Where we go? Um. You could just add some little red juniper berries. You know? And uh, there we go. So uh, I hope that you enjoyed this uh, practice with me session. And uh, until we meet again uh, for an actual coloring video, um, thank you very much for joining me. And please color something pretty. Get out your watercolors. See what you can do. Bye, everybody.